today, but they are dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many that even the things that they want to do for God is exceptional. But because they could not make today, those plans, those purpose is gone. But because you are here, I want you to rise up and shine seven hallelujah to praise God. Let us leave the doors for those that want to come in. Seven hallelujah. 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 Let us have a seat before God. May God continue to bless us in the name of Jesus. I am seeing some new faces amidst us. I think I'm seeing one. Nobody is new in the house of God. And I want to apologize to you in case you are not Nigerian, you are not Yoruba, um, that some of our songs are mostly in Yoruba. We apologize. We ask that next time we will do better in the name of Jesus. Amen. One of the things about this church is this is a spiritual church. It's so spiritual in the way that the things that the world counts as nothing is what God makes for us powers and greatness. And so when you come to this church, you have to have the mind of God, which means to believe in those things that others have counted impossible. Because this God that we serve can make the irrelevant relevant. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This God that we serve can make a nobody somebody. And I pray that God will do that for us all in the name of Jesus. The theme for today's word is this. Remember and rejoice. Can you look at somebody and say remember and rejoice? You know, on earth, we have two kinds of inheritance. We have the legal inheritance, which is the physical one, and we have the spiritual one. If a father has as many possessions that he has, if there's nothing wrong with the family, the mindset is when he dies, everything that he has is given to who? The children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's always the children first, and every other person would follow. But when it comes to God, God does not only give us the physical blessing, inheritance alone. It gives us also the spiritual blessing. And the reason why many lose the things that God has given to them is before anything will be made manifest in the physical realm, it is done in the spiritual realm. And so if you don't have a spiritual standing, that which is physical can still go away. I pray that our blessing will never go away in the name of Jesus. I want you to look within you. Has God done anything for you? Let's even think of not still since when you were born till now. Just think of this year alone. Has God done anything, anything at all for you? Has God even made manifest a miracle? Something that you thought is not impossible and God did it for you. I was speaking with a friend that was so much thoughts thinking that God has not done enough. This is a man of God saying, Yo, for all these years, for all of this, for all of this, and these with the things that I've done. So I asked, I said, Do you have plans for tomorrow? Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when people talk so much, you have to take them off the speech. I said, Do you have plans for tomorrow? He said, Yes, I want to do this. I want God to help me to do this. I want God to help me to do this. He laid down about 20 things that he has plans to do and he wants God to help him with. So I asked him a question. I said, Paraventure that you don't wake up tomorrow, would any of those be possible? And he said, No. I said, Who is that person that wakes you up? Some people will say, Nature is the nature of man to sleep and to wake up. But there's a spirit, there's a power, there's a higher power that makes sure that you sleep, that makes sure that you wake up. Hallelujah. One of the things that my grandmother did to me to make me understand God is this. He said, I want you to write down the time that you go to sleep today. And write down the time that you wake up in the morning. 
Is there anybody that can do that? There's that time that you fell asleep. 10 01 53 seconds. Can anybody do that? And can you tell me what time is that time you wake up? 7 01 41 seconds. Hallelujah. So there's much that God is doing for us. So much that our mind is crowded with things that we are still expecting. And then we forgot to praise God for the things that he has done. And that is what brought the first lesson. I want somebody, please, if you have to have a mic, you know what we do in our church. We want to read the Bible. Grab, grab a mic. And then you can read so that people at home can, you know, hear us when we read it. When you have entered. When, that is Deuteronomy 26 from verse 1. So when you have entered. The land the Lord your God is giving you. The land that God is given to you as an inheritance as an inheritance uh-huh and i've taken possession of it and settled in it and when you have acquired that which god has promised you you see there's one thing with god it would first of all give but in expectant of what you would do with what he has given to you hallelujah so God is speaking to Israel because this is to Israel. That when you get to that land that I'm giving to you, when you now possess it and it become yours, uh huh. Take some of the first fruits. Now take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil. Of all first fruit of all. You know some people that usually practice what we call first fruit. That in the beginning of the year, they take maybe their first check or whatever. They just give it to God and all that. I asked myself, when I read this part, is that all? The word of God said, take the first fruit of what? All that all. you produce. Take the first fruit of all. Not the first fruit of the first. Take the first fruit of all. Uh-huh. From the soil of the land the Lord your God is giving you. Yes, I believe nobody is doing this on heart. Uh -huh. And put them in a basket. Yes. Then go to the place of the Lord your God. Yes. Will choose as a dwelling for his name. Uh -huh. And say to the priest in office. At uh, the time, now, I want you to understand this. You would get what God is promised to give to you. I pray we all get that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever that God has promised you. You know, sometimes we have some things in our mind that we, maybe it's a dream. And it's so good that we want it to become a reality. Sometimes it's something that we read in the world and we said, this is so good, Father, I need this. Whatever your desire might be, as long as it's called good, as long as it doesn't affect others, God will grant it to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And, and so, wait. Uh, God bless you. You are with me, right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So God is saying this. When you now bring it, what do you now do? Uh-huh. Then go to the place the Lord your God will choose. Yes. As a dwelling for his name. Yes. And say to the priest in office at the time. Uh-huh. I declare today. Yes. To the Lord your God. You will now begin to declare. I want you, I want you to understand this is what God is saying. Sit down for a moment. God, you ask God for something. You see, many of us think we are, we are smart. We are very, very smart. You know, I am the brightest in my class. I am the most knowledgeable. I am the most wise. So we think it's our wisdom. We make things happen. Yes. But this is what God is asking us. Don't just bring thanks offering to me for bringing sake. Does God eat rice? No. Does he eat corn? No. Does he eat the money we bring? No. Does he eat candle? No. Does he eat perfume? No. He does not partake in any of those things. He does not eat it. Though he accepts it. But the purpose is this. When you bring all those things, don't just bring it to him. You have to remember the things that God has done. And that is why from verse 8, I want somebody to read from verse 8. They begin to, you, when you bring it, you don't just bring thanks offering to God. You just don't bring an offering to God. You have to bring because you have recalled the things that God has done for you. When you bring it, you have to begin to think of is there any good thing that God has done for me? And you begin to confess those things. Father, I remember when I almost died out of an accident that you saved me. I remember when I was almost shot, but you saved me. 
I remember when my, I almost lost my job and you brought it back to me. I remember when my child was this and you healed him or you healed her. Because from verse 8, they begin to say what? Uh huh. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt. So after they have been in slavery for so many years, some of us have been in slavery before, walking and not seeing any return. Some of us, our state when we were in Nigeria is nothing. But now God has brought you, now you can send money to people, you can even talk to people in a certain way. Because God has made you to arrive. Sit down, man. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't want to take much of the time because we have so much to do today. God wants you to remember. Because the issue with we humans is this. We quickly forget. And that was why if a couple goes to a counselor for counseling, the, one of the things that they ask them to do is to write out the things that is good about your husband, write out what is good about your wife, some good things that they do. So that they can remember. Because when you remember, then you can rejoice. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you don't remember, and you are constantly thinking about the things that God has not done for you, tell me, how would you rejoice? You're thinking how you, you are going to become a millionaire. Somebody like me, I'm thinking of so many things. But the thing is, some of those thoughts will take us completely away from God. And that is why God is telling us. This Thanksgiving, I tell people, Thanksgiving is not just you sitting down and eating with your family or just giving people food. It's a time for you to reflect on the things that God has done for you. I was speaking with, with one of my sons. He told me, he said, you won't believe I, I was in a place, you know, just enjoying myself. And then I needed to go get some things in the gas station. And while I was going, the Holy Spirit says, go back to the house of your friend. Just go there. And then he was trying to argue, but the Holy Spirit said, go. And by the time he got there, the wife is cooking. The wife has already slept. The husband is not at home. The kitchen is on fire. And he helped them to put it off. Now, if he had ignored the voice of God, what would have happened? That would have become a sin for him. Begin to recall the things that God has done for you. And that was why towards the end of the chapter, uh, verse, I think verse 11, he said something there. He said, read from verse 10 so that we can get to the understanding. Uh -huh. And now, yes, I bring the first fruits of the soil. After you have confessed to God, you know, people, I tell you, when you bring in your offering, and you begin to remember, you begin to remember, you begin to remember, you begin to remember, your mood will change. From the mood of just asking and asking. We are only by twist. We are always asking, asking, asking. We are never filled. But if you can just recall the things that God has done for you. The time that people said you are going to be dead, but God said no, you would be alive. The time that people have thought you are not going to have a family. That you are like a lily on water. And God granted you a family. Uh-huh. That you, Lord, have given me. Yes. Place the basket before the Lord your After God. After that, then you can bring the offering and then place it down. If you are bringing an offering and your mind is divided. You're thinking of this. You're thinking of something that is irrelevant to God. How do you now have, because I tell people, you can only get valuable things from people that you have good relationship with. Hallelujah. Yeah. If I know you don't like me now, unless if God tells me to go an extra length for you, my going an extra length will be reduced because what is the purpose? But if I know that you are always there for me, if you need me to go to the moon for you, I will say, okay, give me, even if I'm busy, I'll say, just give me a minute. I'll go. Because you have a relationship. And that is the reason why you have to remember. You have to just remember. And then when you bring that offering down. Uh -huh, and bow down before you him. You would now bow before your king. And then. Then you and the Levites. Uh -huh, and the foreigners residing among you. Yes. Shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord God has given to you. Hallelujah. Then you can rejoice. 
Can you look at somebody and say rejoice? Rejoice. Do you know many of us when we come to church on Sunday, we don't rejoice? We leave. All we do is leave him. We need to rejoice. But the only thing that can give you joy is to recall the goodness of God. If you truly, truly say you love somebody, that means you are always recalling the things, the good thing that the person did for you. I love my husband is because the husband has done good and you are recalling. I love my wife is because the wife has done good and you are recalling. I love my shepherd is because the shepherd has done good and you are recalling. If, that, if those people are terrible people, you would not say I love them. You can say you care, but the word love will not come out. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. How often do you sit, sit down and think about the things that God has done for you? How often do you remember the memories of so many things that God has done for you? The key to this message is just to remember the things that God has done for you. To remember God's love. To remember God's loyalty. To remember that the commitment of God concerning his promises would not fail. That is one thing I love about God. If he says, I will do this, let the whole world be against you. It's going to be for a time. The word of God will be fulfilled. If you are that person that you know the word of God will be fulfilled in your life, shout hallelujah. God wants you to bring into your memory when he res rescued you, when he provided for you, when he released you, when he revived you, when he restored you. I'm going to tell you something today. The key to salvation is giving credit to God. That's the key to salvation. Giving the credit that is due to God, to God. Do you know that I, I'm talking about myself, there's no perfect offering that I can bring that can equate the debt that Christ died for me. I don't know, maybe you have that perfect gift that you think you can bring. That you know it would equate. When I bring this I'm at the same level. So you see, it is not the things we bring. It is not in the gift. It is not in the money. It is not. It is just a perfect gift of God. If God does not promise me the tomorrow, every other purpose that I have for tomorrow is voided. Mufet Dile, I want to be the chairman, managing director, Ecuador, and worldwide company. I want to be the HOD, I want to be the regional, I want to be the state, I want to be anything in life. If God does not promise tomorrow, you can think about it all day today. Tomorrow, psh. you can secure yourself with everything that you need around you. If God does not secure you, it's a waste. I've seen people that a straight bullet just came out of nowhere and killed. There were like 10 people standing. The only person that the gun could reach was the person in the middle. How did that happen? If you don't wake up, the rest is history. The wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding. I am the shepherd. You can't talk to me anyhow. I am the most supreme. You can't step on my toe. I am the best person in the world. You can't look at me like that. Once you're dead, it's history. And can somebody tell me here that he has actually a sacrifice that he or she has made to make sure that death cannot come? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, because I would love to be from, become friends with that person so that I can have an extra life. When they talk about Bekude or the name, in Koton Kwa, Tonfi Bekude, Oku Kotole, Bifi Bede. Babala Wuto Shek Bekude, Gopu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eh? You said you have a charm that you put somewhere. Once you put it somewhere and it doesn't drop, your life is, is certain. That, the, the animal that was killed had to die before that sacrifice was made. Even the priest that make it will die. Talk much of you that is being given to. Can you look at someone that say remember and rejoice? And that is why I want us to go to a level that we begin to put smiles on people's face. Not only the food alone. I want, you to, I want us to begin to graduate from food to something else. 
remember something that God has done for you. And then rejoice. The only way that your joy can be full is when the Levites and the less privileged, the motherless, the fatherless, the widows, all of these people rejoice with you. God blesses you and it is you alone. You carry three of your friends that never knew how God did it. And you went to the uh, club, you went to drink, you did all that. And at the end of the day, something happened along the way. Who should we blame? Is it God? I pray that God will bless all of us in the name of Jesus. I want us to open to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. Yes, chapter 1, the 11th verse. Also, yes, an inheritance in him, in Christ, we also have obtained an inheritance, uh huh, being predestinated according to the purpose of him. An inheritance that has been predestined for the children of God, according to the will of God. Uh -huh. Who worketh all things Yes. after the counsel of his own will. Hallelujah. God works all things after the counsel of his own will. And now, if you don't remember that God that works all things after the counsel of his own will, then whose will will be done? I tell people, if the will of God is not done, there's another will. It's called the will of Satan. I pray that the will of God will be done in our life in the name of Jesus. How do you ascertain that your inheritance is not taken away? How do you make sure that your inheritance is never taken away. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3. From verse 23. Whatever you do. Yes. Work at it with all your heart. Whatever that you do. Can you say whatever I do? Uh-huh. As working for the Lord. You know, whatever you do. You see the way we're reading it. Okay. Go with what, us, sir. Whatever you do. Yes. Work at it with all your heart. Do it with all your heart. Uh-huh. As working for the Lord. As doing it for God. Not for human masters. Not for human masters. It is easy to please me. If you want to please me, sit down, sir. All you have to do is do, you know, do your magumago and smile in my face. I would think you, you love me the most. But with God, he can seize the whole heart. He can see you. You are too transparent for you to hide some things from God. And that is why you have to use your might and everything that God has given to you to remember God in everything you do. I am building myself to a level that even if I want to drink water, I want to say thank you for this water. Because sometimes we have many people in the hospital now that they cannot drink water by themselves. They cannot eat by themselves. They cannot lift their legs by themselves. But all of these things God has given to myself and you freely. I pray that this will never be taken away in the name of Jesus. And that is why the second Bible reading, John chapter 4, Christ is telling us some things there. Because many of us, we do things differently. John chapter 4 from verse 34. My food, said Jesus. My food, said Jesus. Uh -huh. Is to do the will of him. Is to do the will of what? Him. Uh -huh. Who sent me. Yes. And to finish his work. Is not only to do his will. But to finish his work. Which means the will of Christ becomes work. Sit down, sir. God bless us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. What is the will of God? Remember and then rejoice. In everything. You want to give thanks offering? Remember, rejoice. You want to worship? Remember, rejoice. 
You want to bless someone. Don't bless someone by grumbling. Yeah, he's always standing by that junction all the time. And he will be looking at me, at me as if I don't want to give him anything. Let me just give him a dollar. It's a waste. Just keep that dollar and keep it in your pocket. Then give it to him. But Christ tells us that our purpose is to do the will of God. Now if I ask you, are you doing the will of God? In your home, are you doing the will of God? At your place of work, are you doing the will of God? Even in the church, are you doing the will of God or are you pretending? You know, most of us can pretend. We can come to the church and look like the best person in the world and then get to our house and then start doing our rubbish again. My wife calls that name, Adaranijo. Adaranijo. You are so nice in the church, but you are another thing elsewhere. When the church were saying to you are outside, you are a devil. That will not be our case in the name of Jesus. Our imperfection can only be perfected by God. And that is why God is telling us, he said in verse 34, that my food is to do the will of him who sent me. Your food, my food, is to do the will of that God that sent us. I tell people, if you don't know your purpose or not, you're living a wasteful life. You need to know, for what purpose am I here? Well, why are you here? Even in the church, why are you here? You have to know the purpose. Why are you brought into a family? You have to know the purpose. Why are you with your spouse? It's for a purpose. Why are you in that place, that job? It's for a purpose. I pray that God will give us understanding in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So as we continue to give credit to God, there are three things that God does. Apart from the you know, physical blessings that we see day after day, time after time. You know, some people only come to church because of that physical blessing. You pray for them, for blessing. They don't see within three days they will leave the church because they believe God is not working. Like they have a remote control, the offline for miracles in their hand. Hallelujah. Apart from the physical blessings that we want, I want homes, I want husband, I want wife, I want the best house in America, I want the best church, I want the best people, I want this. God does three things by removing us. The first thing that God does is to make us into a person of justice. Can you say a person of justice? If you can remember and rejoice always before God, God will remove you into a person of justice. And what this does is it makes you as a person to always want the same salvation that you have for others. That means you are not selfish. You want that salvation that you have. You want it for everybody. You know some people don't like that. They are in a church. The church is good to them. It's doing them good. They want to make sure that nobody comes to that church if possible. But if you're a person of justice, you want that same thing that you have. You want others to have it too. God gives you house. You want others to be able to have a house. God gives you a car. You want everybody to be blessed with a car. God gives you a good husband. You want everybody to have good husbands too. That can only be done if we always remember and rejoice so that God can remove us into a person of justice. I pray that God will do that for us in the name of Jesus. Another thing that God will do if you continue to remember and to rejoice is this. God will mold you into a person of mercy whereby forgiving people will come to you freely. You know many of us cannot forgive. Many of us can't. We struggle with forgiveness because of the hurt, because of the pain, because of the things that happen. Ah, they've done, ah, did you see the way, the things that Nigerians have done for me? Ah, I will never deal with Nigerians anymore. And God will plant your mercy in the hands of Nigerians. That's how God works. And now you don't want to deal with Nigeria, but your mercy is in the hands of one. Ah, white people, me, I don't want to deal with white people anymore. And God will expressly put your, the, something great in the hands of a white man to help you, or a white woman. 
and because you're mad at all white people, you can't even get it. Remembering and rejoicing will make you a person of mercy, whereby all that flows around you is called the favor of God. If you want to shout hallelujah. You know, some people flow into an area, you would, it would be like they've just put some honey around those areas. There are some people that when they come around me, I'm already smiling. They, are, they have not even said anything. Their purpose, I don't know. But once I see them, I'm smiling. Because I know when they come around, it's good news. Do you spread the good news? A person of mercy spreads good news. You don't be the one that, ah, you have a dick. Hey, do you know one of my four sisters, one of my great, 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 great grandmothers that died in the year I can't recall, died of headache. And the person is thinking now, oh, am I going to die? I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, God would remove you to become a person of humility. A person like Jesus. That is the level that we all need to get to. A level that when people step on you, it does not matter. You don't hold on to things like it is do or die thing. Many of us cannot let go of most things. And these things were given to us by God. You can't let go of your time. Talk much of your money. You can't even come before God and not... You'll be looking at your clock like, you know, it's... I got to go. But then you would expect that God to use all his lifetime on you. What kind of relationship is that? You give God this yearly too. But you expect God to give you all of this. Remember and rejoice. I pray that God will help us to that level in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 But there's a way around it. It's the way is simple. We all know the way. For you to receive anything from God, you have to just believe. John 3 16 said, huh? I know everybody can read it now. Ah, uh, uh, more money. John 3 16. Uh, that's all I'm hearing now. John 3 16. Can somebody read it? Uh, uh, read it and use the mic. For God so loved the world. Go ahead. <laughs> For God so loved the world. John 3 16. Yes. Yes. That he gave his only begotten son. Yes. That whosoever believe in him. Whosoever. Joy is mandated for her. Rejoicing is mandated for her. The condition is whosoever. Uh -huh. Shall not perish. Whosoever believes. Whosoever believes, whosoever have faith, whosoever believe. And one of the things that I found out about Christ Jesus is this. Sinama, Matthew 19. We we'll, we'll, we'll round up with this. Matthew 19. Let us look at verse 16. And then after verse 16, go to 21. When somebody came to Christ and was asking Christ for the way to get that permanent inheritance, which is eternal life. You know, you can have money, have house, have car, have everything and still lose heaven. Matthew. That will never be our case in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hold on, man. Yes, sir. Is that not true? You can have everything in this world and still lose God, oh. and still lose salvation, and still born in hellfire. I pray that will not be our case in the name of Jesus. So this man came to God, verse 16. Uh -huh. And behold, yes. one came and said unto him, One came to God, uh-huh. Good master. Good master. What good thing shall I do? Yes. That I may have eternal life. What good thing can I do to have that perfect inheritance? Enjoy life and enjoy heaven. And what did Christ say? And he said unto him, Yes. Why callest thou me good? Let's go to verse 21. Verse 21. Yes. Jesus said unto him, Yes. If thou will be perfect. If you want a perfect life, Go and sell if what you that want has. everything to work well for you. If you want that there's nothing holding you back to go to heaven. Uh-huh. 
Go and sell what you have. Yes. And give to the poor. Yes. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Uh huh. And come and, and follow then, me. After you have given all, then come back and follow me. Uh huh. Read 22. 22. But when the young man heard that yes. saying, yes. he went away sorrowful. Yes. For he had great possessions. Hallelujah. See, one of our issues that is not helping us in life is we cannot let go. And that is why we need God to remove us to a person of humility. To know that, yes, I have this car, but this car is given to me by God. Yes, I have this home, but this home is made possible by God. Because this man could not make heaven because of all of those possessions. He does not see a way where he has to let go of any of it. He wants to acquire more and more and more. The same thing for many of us. You have a hundred dress. You know someone that does not have one. Instead of thinking, okay, let me just give one. You're thinking of how I can make it a hundred and one. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. So today, I'm asking you that during the tax offering today and even every time that you are before god because you don't have to be in the church to be before god you have to always remember that it is only god that has made somebody like me because you get rid of me if it wasn't for god let's say sometimes i do think of it if god you allow the enemy to have their way one day i'll be gone if god you allow the enemy to have their way in your life one day you will become nobody some of us were being in the street picking papers. But God did not let that happen. So today, and even for many times that you will, God will grant you the grace to see every day, I want you to always do what? Remember and rejoice. Remember and rejoice. That is what God wants us to do. Remember and rejoice. And I pray that as many that remembers and rejoice before God, your joy will always be full in the name of Jesus every great thing that you need to become the manifestation on this the manifestation of god on this heart i ask that god almighty will give it to you in the name of jesus the wisdom the knowledge the understanding needed to succeed to become a woman of value a man of greatness a woman and a man of honor i ask that god will bestow it upon you in the name of jesus the mindset to never kick against God, to always remember and rejoice, not alone, but the people of God. I ask that God Almighty will endow you with it in the name of Jesus. As you have come before God today, you will not go home empty-handed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let us go on our knees. Thank you for listening.